Welcome to the show. I'm Katie Fang. After 19 children and two adults were gunned down at an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas, we're told by Republicans not to politicize this tragedy. They tell us not to bring up the fact that we have more guns in circulation in this country than we have people. They tell us not to bring up the fact that our country has more guns per capita than any other country in the world. They tell us not to bring up the fact that weapons of war that can be so easily purchased by an 18-year-old who can't even buy a beer. Republicans tell us that we can discuss anything and everything after a mass shooting. We could talk about the shooter, the victims, the culture, even the school doors. One of the things that, that, that everyone agreed is don't have all of these unlocked back doors. Have one door into and out of the school and have that one door armed police officers at that door. If that had happened, if those federal grants had gone to this school, when that psychopath arrived, the armed police officers could have taken him out and we'd have 19 children and two teachers still alive. Yes, Senator Ted Cruz would prefer that we talk about how many doors we have in schools across this country. But how dare we discuss the guns that kill? How dare we bring politics into this tragedy? But how can we not? The inconvenient reality is these tragedy, tragedies keep happening because it's a political choice. The number of school shootings is rising. Already in 2022, there have been 27 shootings at schools. Since 2018, there have been 119 school shootings with multiple casualties. More than 300,000 children have experienced gun violence in schools since the Columbine High School massacre in 1999. And there's been no action taken by our lawmakers in Washington. Here's a list of Republican lawmakers receiving money from the gun lobby. Senator Ted Cruz, chief among them, has directly received over $442,000 from gun rights groups. Representative Steve Scalise of Louisiana took $396,000. Senator John Cornyn of Texas received $340,000. Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, $284,000. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, $247,000. And then there's the millions of dollars in indirect campaign spending. Senator Mitt Romney has received over $13.6 million from the NRA, according to the Brady campaign. Senator Richard Burr, nearly $7 million. Senator Roy Blunt, $4.6 million. Senator Tom Tillis, about $4.4 million. Senator Cory Gardner, nearly $4 million. But, of course, Washington, D.C. isn't made up solely of Republicans. Democrats control the White House and both chambers of Congress. There are two Democratic senators, Senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, who can join their fellow Democrats and banish the filibuster in order to pass gun control legislation. They can pass H.R. 8, the Bipartisan Background Checks Act of 2021, which would expand federal background checks for all gun purchases. Eight House Rep Republicans supported this bill, with one Democrat voting against it. But surprise, surprise, the bill is stalled in the Senate because all 50 Republican senators don't even want to consider it, and because two Democratic senators don't want to change the Senate's rules. After every tragedy whether it's the mass shooting in Buffalo, New York last week or in Newton, Connecticut 10 years ago, we reach the same political impasse. There's the initial rage and grief from the public, the speeches from our lawmakers, and maybe a few bills are introduced in Congress. But then politics, the very thing we're not supposed to talk about, inevitably prevents any sort of federal action to address the gun violence. So my question is, are we just shouting helplessly into a political void? Or are we ready to make a different political choice? Joining me now is Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell of California. Congressman, I'm always pleased to have you, especially on this important day. I want to talk to you about H.R. 8, the Bipartisan Background Checks Act of 2021. Passed by the House, it's now stalled in the Senate. What are your specific plans to advance common sense gun legislation for all Americans? Because it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. Uh, Katie, uh, we need it to go somewhere because this is about our kids. And, and my plans are to continue to put pressure 
on the Senate uh, to work, and, and I'm going to be on a phone call uh, as soon as I get off here uh, with activists across the country about what the game plan is going forward. But we need to show the focus, the focus that the anti-choice folks have used for decades, right? They have taken such a wildly unpopular opinion, something that the majority of Americans don't support and are, are not in favor of, but they were focused. And for decades, they focused on getting judges and elected officials in place to take that white right away from a woman. Imagine if we were as focused as they were on something that's popular, 90% popular, to have background checks. So if, if we as Democrats and independents and, and Republicans who want gun safety can just focus on an issue, I promise you, we can protect our kids. Congressman, all of that was going on in plain sight. It's not like these were secret backdoor deals, secret backdoor handshakes that were transpiring to make those things happen. So the fact that it's now taken place, can you actually tell us, can you tell Americans that there really is a future that's going to include gun legislation that's going to protect all of us and keep us safe? Yes, yeah, it, it has to happen, Katie, because we're lying to our kids otherwise. And, and I know you have small children. I have a five-year-old who's just, in the last couple of weeks, starting to ask questions as he walks into the room with the news on. And, and no one wants to lie to your parents. But if you were telling your child at bedtime that they have nothing to worry about, that they're safe at their school, you know deep down, you know deep down that that's a lie. Because we are a country of unrestricted weaponry where the most dangerous people have access to the most dangerous weapons. So unless you as a voter are willing to vote for gun safety candidates, or as you as a lawmaker are willing to enact gun safety measures, every parent is lying to their children right now. I don't want to be in that position as a parent. I've actually, I came into government when Sandy Hook happened, and now 10 years later, a new generation that I'm seeing before my eyes with this five-year-old is also living terror terrorized by gun violence. So that's why we have to just focus. Democrats too often get spread out, and, and we follow polls what voters say are the top issues to them, rather than leading and telling voters what the top issues have to be. Freedom to learn, freedom to go home, freedom to hug your parents. Those freedoms are on the ballot this November. And if we can just focus, the parents of America are behind us. Congressman, I'm glad that you brought up Sandy Hook, because after that shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary in Newtown, Connecticut passed a law banning people from loading more than 10 rounds of ammunition in their firearms. On the other hand, Texas passed a permitless carry bill that allows for Texans to carry handguns openly in public without going through training or even getting a license. It seems like the states, whether you agree with the laws or not, the states are really doing a lot more right now than Washington when it comes to major issues like guns and even abortion. So what's the purpose of Congress anymore? If you can't even pass the laws that are going to deal with the biggest, most important issues, has Washington just become performative at this point? Well, Katie, I would say, uh, first, until we have federal background checks and federal red flag laws and a federal ban on assault weapons, you're only as safe as the state with the best laws around you, right? So uh, in Chicago, for example, you know, in Illinois, they're right next to Indiana with the loosest gun laws. You can't buy a gun in the city of Chicago, but just across the border in Indiana, guns flow in because they have very, very loose gun laws. But yes, I would actually urge our local elected officials, and we're seeing this in San Jose, California, by the way, where they're requiring insurance uh, if you have a firearm, that local elected officials can take gun safety measures. But take a step back here. How far have we come since Sandy Hook? After Sandy Hook, seven years went by without a single hearing on gun violence. And then Moms Demand Action, the Parkland students, they converged and we won the House in 2018, passed background checks in 2019. Now we're just a few votes short in the Senate. So while it looks like we haven't come that far, we've actually come miles since Sandy Hook and we're there, we're on the goal line. And that's why people need to show up this November to give us the votes for a gun safety majority in the Senate. You know, Congressman, I ask you about the difference between the federal and the state politics play, because I, I want you to actually listen first to Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and what do you have to say about having a floor vote on H.R. 8. Let's take a listen. They want to see this body vote quickly so the American people can know which side each senator is on, which side each senator is on. I'm sympathetic to that. And I believe that accountability votes are important. But sadly, this isn't a case of the American people not knowing where their senators stand. They know. 
why not have that vote? Put it on the record that after this tragedy in Texas, certain Republican senators are going to refuse to take action. This is just another way to make them publicly accountable. So what are your thoughts about the fact that the majority leader's decision is to not have a floor vote on this? Uh, Katie, I actually called uh, the night uh, of Uvalde, the, the night that this tragedy happened. The Senate was in session, and they should have just put it up for a vote there, put the background checks bill up for a vote that night. Now a couple days have passed, and we've not seen legislation yet. Americans should know where these senators stand. And if 19 dead babies, 19 families who are going to put their little kids who are unrecognizable into little coffins and never see them again, if that doesn't move a single senator on the Republican side, then that tells every community in America what they have to do this November. Congressman Eric Swalwell, as always, I thank you for your time and your insight. Thank you My so pleasure. much.